All right, today we're gonna to learn about some really useful watercolor techniques. And there are 12 of them that we're gonna to cover today. So first of all, we're gonna grid out our paper like this using a ruler. And I am using watercolors like this, but you can use any kind. Um, and I will be starting off just from the beginning here. So I have a few different brushes. I have some clean water and I have some paper towels to start. So the first thing I wanna do is dry brush. And this is where I can use a brush that's a little bit um, rough. And I'm gonna get just a tiny bit of water on my brush and a little bit of paint on my brush. But I really want my brush to look a little bit dry. And this will be a great sort of texture for um, things like grass and things like that. If I feel like I have a little too much water, I can always blot some on a paper towel. And this is really good for getting kind of scratchy effects. Great for grass, bark, trees, things like that. So experiment with just how much paint you really need on your brush. See, and you can kind of pick up the paper texture with the dry brush effect. So that's dry brush. Wet and wet is very different. I'm going to start by getting just some clean water and I'm going to just paint plain water on my paper. And I don't want it to be very wet I just want it to have a little bit of shine. So when you look at the paper, it's not like a puddle, but it does shine a little bit. Once my paper is wet, I'm gonna get some different colors on my brush and I'm going to paint them into the water. And you can see already the color, the pigment kind of spreads out on the paper. And what's really magical about this is when you get some different colors together and they start to blend by themselves on the paper. So this works great if you use colors that are somewhat close to each other on the color wheel or making like mixtures of those colors and kind of playing with how they can blend together. And the way they dry is somewhat unexpected too, which is really fun. So I love experimenting with this. Um, the next one, a flat wash, is going to start just like a wet in wet. I'm actually going to paint with water. And then a flat wash is where I want to have just one color that is very, very consistent. So I'm going to get some one color on my brush. In this case, I'm using purple. And I'm going to use kind of a, a flat brush like this helps. And I'm going to go across one way and then just one time go across another way. And just let it sit. Don't go over it too many times. The water will help it kind of settle into a nice flat um, consistent wash. In contrast, a graded wash is where we want to have it be a gradient from one side to another. So I'm gonna start the same way. I'm gonna paint with just water. And this technique is really great for skies. So I'm gonna use a blue to show you. And what you wanna do is load your brush with paint to start. Start on one side and then don't reload your brush. Just kind of take that one side and bring that paint to the other side. So you can see as my brush is running out of paint, it's starting to get less and less colorful. And I actually just dried off my brush and I'm kind of soaking up a little bit of water. I'm trying to show a transition from a darker blue to a lighter blue. So imagine this is like the top of the sky and the bottom of the sky. That can be a really fun effect. This technique is one of my absolute favorites using salt. So to start with salt, I'm just gonna start with a wash again. So I'm just going to paint it with some water, paint it with some color, 
And when you use a darker color for your wash, it creates a more dramatic effect with the salt. So while this paint is really wet, I take some salt. You can use coarse salt like this or fine grain salt. Different types of salt can create different kinds of effects. And I'm taking just a tiny pinch and I am sprinkling it onto my paint. And this will create some really cool effects where basically the salt absorbs some of the color and it's going to leave some kind of really interesting kind of crystallizing sort of effects with the paint. So that's gonna be really fun. Lifting is also really cool. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm gonna make another wash. So I'm gonna use this and I'm gonna use a purple, a bluish purple here. This is also really awesome for skies. So again, I'm starting with a wash and for this, I'm gonna use paper towel. So I'm just gonna rip up some little pieces of paper towel, crumple them up and kind of squish it onto the paint while it's still wet. And what I'm doing is lifting some of the paint off and this can create some really cool kind of clouds. Okay, you can use other things besides paper towels. You could use Q-tips. You can also experiment with a wet paper towel instead of a dry paper towel, but you have to work fast. You have to have pretty wet paint for this to work. It's already a little too dry for me to do anything else now. So this is really nice, but you kind of have to plan ahead a little bit. Scraffito is also a lot of fun. Um, it means scratching, basically. And you can use a lot of different things for scratching. I'm gonna use a paper clip that I bent out of shape a little bit, and I'm going to kind of scratch into my paper and see if that message shows up. So I'm gonna scratch into my paper first, then I'm going to paint over it, and look at that, it shows up. Another thing you can do is while your paint is wet, you can scratch into the wet paint and see if that creates kind of a different effect. And they're looking kind of similar right now, but you can kind of experiment with pressure. This can create some really nice textures and interesting effects too. So that's Scruffito. The next kind of painting is called wet on dry and it is really simple. This is just how we usually paint stuff. So my paint, but my paper is dry and I'm just applying wet paint directly on the surface. And this is how people normally think of painting with watercolor. You just have some wet paint on a dry surface and this gives you a lot of control. So that's really useful. Um, very useful for just lots of details and things like that. So just experiment with painting how you would just use paint on a dry surface. This next technique is a lot of fun. It is where you can use your paint in a splattery way and create some really fun effects. So for this one, you want to get your water, you want to mix it up with your color so that you have a lot of color on your brush. This works great with um, sort of more bristly brushes. And what you can do is you can um, kind of flick your finger on the brush and it will create little splatters on the paper. So like I said, make sure you have plenty of really concentrated paint on your brush for this and it can be really cool. Another thing you can do kind of similar is really load up your brush again and paint sort of a large pile of color and then get close to your paper and you can blow on the paint and it can create this really cool abstract splattery effect. 
Now with both of these techniques, you wanna make sure that you are in a space where you're not gonna affect other people's artworks. The next one is resist. So anytime you have a white oil pastel or a white um, crayon, you can um, draw with it. And at first it will look invisible, but the magic happens when you put some watercolor paint on top. Oil and wax will resist the water and you will get um, kind of like a secret image that appears. Sometimes it takes a minute to show up. Sometimes it shows up right away. You can also get, um, if it's not showing up perfectly, you can kind of blot some of it off too. I used a crayon here. Sometimes oil pastel works a little bit better, but you can see my sort of wavy pattern is starting to show up and it looks pretty cool. This technique is also a lot of fun. You can create some really interesting textures with it. So again, like with the washes, I'm gonna start with just a slightly wet paper. I'm gonna load up my color, paint a wash. Just like with some of these other effects, this works great if you have kind of a darker color. Then you take some plastic wrap and you lay it on top of your paint and kind of scrunch it up and let it just try to sit there and try not to touch it once you have it in place. And what's gonna happen is you can kind of see this pattern that's starting to develop here. When you let it dry, once the paint is totally dry, you can take the plastic wrap off and it will create kind of a cool rocky texture. Okay, for masking, you're gonna use some good old masking tape. You don't need a ton. And you can use smaller pieces of it. You can use big pieces of it. You can do kind of however you want. And for this technique, you're going to lay down your masking tape. Then you are going to just paint over the top of it. And then when you remove the masking tape, you will have the white paper surface underneath. Um, I would recommend letting it dry a little bit before you remove the masking tape, but here's sort of a sneak peek. Ta-da! You can see it creates a nice crisp border there. And there you have it. Here are our completed techniques. You can see how you can get such a variety of effects using simple materials and watercolor. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you guys get to try all of these and have a lot of fun with it.